do this again. Hey there, Danny here. Welcome to my ramblings. Um, I have found my true authentic self. Um, I've always had a very firm belief that there's a reason we're all here. What that reason is, I never knew. But I believed that if I constantly worked on myself and became a better person, that it would be shown to me. After the epiphanies last night, which I had multiple, one just led into another, into another, into another, until all of a sudden I had this grand excitement of, of oh my goodness, and, and I've been sitting on cloud nine since then. <clears throat> uh, so, <laughs> uh, the pain we go through are supposed to be things that we, we, lessons we learn so we can heal and so any wounds that we have and so we can get rid of preconditioned uh, ideas that were either given to us or that society imposed on us or our parents or anybody. Um, <laughs> I, I, I looked back while I was having these epiphanies and all I kept thinking was, oh my God, at any time I should have been able to see that. I didn't. So you know how they always say that rejection is God's protection. It is. We're just glutton for punishment because we don't want to take the time to stop and look. Had I taken the time to stop and look at what was going on, I would have realized that I kind of knew I was going to do something that helped other people. Um, I wanted to be of service. And I, I, I kind of knew that I was really good at giving advice. Um, most of my friends, family, my son's friends, um, everybody would come to me when they'd have a problem and I'd sit and we'd play scenarios out or we'd talk about it until we figured something out. And sometimes we didn't have to figure something out, just me putting it into a different perspective because I wasn't emotionally attached to what they were dealing with, um, kind of made them look at things a little differently. So I knew that there was something I wanted to do with that, but I didn't want to be a psychiatrist or any of that. I didn't, I didn't want to get paid to sit and listen to everything that you have to for that. Um, and then they came out with that whole life coaching. And I was like, I could do that. That could work. But everybody kept saying, well, you got to have a niche. And you got to have this. And you got to have that. And I'm like, I don't want that. I don't want to pick an area. Because my friends and family and, and stuff did not come to me for advice. Because I was an expert in any area. They came to me because they knew that I was going to look at it objectively. And that I was... I was going to be brutally honest with them. So a, a lot of my girlfriends, uh, one from college I can remember, Anita, she was going out on a date and she wanted to buy a dress. She was a larger girl, very well endowed on the top. And <laughs> she had sent me some, uh, she emailed me some pictures of some dresses she was looking at. I'm like, you, you. and one was, it literally was like a box here. And I said, you can't wear that. That's not gonna. That's not gonna flatter you. So she sent me some other stuff, and then we, I finally saw one that I liked. So my friends would have a habit of, I'm not a shopper. I, I if I go to the store, I want to get in. I want to get my things, and I want to get the hell out. I'm not a shopper, um, which I've discussed about consumerism and 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 the beauty market and everything in some other videos. So, uh, but my friends would contact me. When they would go shopping because, and this is what they would tell me, because they want an honest opinion and I'll tell them if their butt looks bad in those jeans. <laughs> so 
I knew that I wanted to do something with that. And I knew that that's, that's where I needed to go. It, it, it felt natural. It felt why I was here. I still couldn't figure out how I was going to do it. And life coaching, okay, but it still didn't fit with what I wanted to do. So I would go through years and years of precondition issues and, and things that I believed. And I took a lot of things on, not necessarily because somebody was maliciously trying to tell me that that's who I was. Um, but I internalized it that way for some reason. And, and and I didn't know this. And at any time throughout my adult life, I could have seen some of this stuff and realized, hey, dummy, you're on the wrong path. Hey, you got, you know, pay attention here. I didn't. I was busy living my life, raising my, my sons and, and doing what we do. Living the dream. The first instance that would bring some clarity to me would be when I bought my first house. Um, my second ex-husband and I spent, well, I should say I spent three years cleaning up our credit um, and getting everything set up so we could buy a house. We bought the house and about six months after we had the house, we're sitting out in the backyard. We had a huge diving pool in the backyard. Um, so I hung out, I lived in that backyard. I mean, it's, it's Phoenix, Arizona. And you can stay out there all the time. We had a ceiling fan out there in the patio. We had misters, everything else. So, uh, I lived in the backyard. But I remember six months in, we were sitting out in the backyard at our patio set. And we are having cocktails. And I looked over at him and I said, is this it? We have, we're married, we have we have the kids, we have, we have the house, we have nice cars, we have good jobs. I was like, is this it? Is this, is, is, is this what everybody kept talking about? The American dream? Is this it? I said, cause if this is it, what do we do now? We just sit here and, and, and wait to die. I said, cause this just, doesn't seem like living. I'm working. I'm sure I'm spending my money. My house, it was a nice house. It, we furnished it with nice things. And then it was all set up for watching movies and, and for the kids and, and the ex being gamers and everything. But I just thought this is it. We just spend the rest of our lives working, put money away for our retirement and um, buy things to fill up our house with and just pay for this. But th th this is it. This is what they kept preaching to us as we were in high school. Get a good education. Go to college. Get a degree so you can get a good job. And you get married. You both have good jobs. And then you can have kids and a house. And this was the dream that they sold all of us. And all I could think was, well, this is a sham. I don't want any of it to do with this. This is, this is, this is it. I didn't see the excitement. I didn't grasp it. Mind you, I wasn't a big consumer. So that's probably why it didn't fit well with me. Because the only reason we have to increase our house sizes is because we buy more crap to put in it. If you didn't have as much crap, you wouldn't need that much space. So you could live a lot cheaper and have way more money set aside. But that's not how our culture is. So I used to think, oh, this is it. And I would start talking again about doing the RV thing and traveling. And at the time, I thought I couldn't do it. Because how are you going to make a living on the road? I, I, we're talking 90s, early 2000s. Um, how are you going to do that? Uh, and, and, and it's just, I was not happy. 
They fed me, this is what I'm supposed to pursue. And once I have it, I will feel accomplished. I didn't feel accomplished. I felt burdened. I mean, we were living a nice life. My, my, my checks paid for everything, and then his checks were the extra money. I mean, we lived a very nice life, but this was it. I got to do this for 30, 40 years until I retire. And the house is paid off. I was like, who thought this up? Because <laughs> this doesn't fit me <laughs> or what I want. So then 2008 happened and the big, you know, great recession and whatever. Lost the house. Doesn't matter. I, I was, I was sad to see it go because I was proud of my house. But, I wasn't fully happy. And again, rejection is God's protection. That's not where I was supposed to go. I wasn't supposed to stay working as a paralegal in a law firm. And, and come home and, and live in this nice house and just wait until I had enough money to retire and then... And then basically wait around to die. Didn't make much sense to me. So I had to be thrown into some pretty heavy things so I would get redirected and get back on track for what my, my true calling is. And I can tell you that last night I had epiphany after epiphany after epiphany about some really crazy preconditioned things that I had I, I had internalized and, and and taken it as if it was who I was. And it wasn't. None of that was me. So I had this, 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 for years, I and I always thought it was crazy. For years, I had this, this, I thought it was fear of success. But all I kept thinking was, there, I can't be afraid of success. What the hell is that? How, how can that happen? That doesn't make sense. So, all right, I'm not going to sit with it. Let go, let God. Um, and I... <laughs> My first epiphany last night literally was I internalized that I needed a significant other in order to be successful. And here's why I did it. It doesn't matter who said what, what was said to me as a child to initially start this internal belief that I, I held on to and I didn't realize that I was holding on to it. It was reinforced by the family and the people around me. So, I watched as my aunts around me, their lives weren't the greatest. They weren't doing well financially or anything else. They were struggling like my mom and, and us and everything else. But when I watched each one of them get married and maybe have kids or not have kids if it was the you know marriage and they were already older not gonna have any more kids because maybe both of them had kids anyways um I watched how their lives had grown they had they had they were living the American dream so I internalized that in order to live the American dream I had to have somebody with me and if you would have known me as a teenager I was so dang independent. Nobody was going to tell me what to do. Uh, that, that I can't even believe I internalized that. And I didn't realize it until last night. And when I realized that, I started looking over at some other things in my life. There were points throughout my life that I knew that, that something wasn't right. I knew that what was happening... was supposed to be a redirection. I just didn't 
know how to redirect myself. And I didn't, I didn't hand everything over. I have had a firm belief since I was in grade school and um, we started uh, going to church. Um, I've had a firm belief that God is there, that he helps you if, if you need it. And he's always come through for me. That's one thing I will tell anybody and everybody, and I have throughout most of my adult life, that God will provide. And he has. Um, little did I know that if, I, if I'd have gotten out of my own way and handed everything over to him, then then I'd have arrived here quicker. But after that, I realized if I would have arrived here quicker, I would have also had not as much wisdom as I do now. So everything that I went through had to happen so I could get to this very moment in time. And this very moment in time is, I have told you before that I, I have another secured phone line. Um, I would like to be here and be able to help people where they can't see. They're too emotionally attached. And I get, the, I get, I get that way. When I'm emotionally attached, I can't see. <clears throat> but I raised my sons. So when I when I know that I'm emotionally attached and I'm not seeing things clearly, I will reach out to my adult sons and I'll be like, hey, I'm not really seeing things clearly. I know that 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 I'm too emotionally attached. And my sons knowing me and, and how I raised them, they're able to look at it without the emotions and be able to give me a redirection. So I was blessed with my sons. So I have that re redirection. I would like to be your re redirection. When you're struggling with something and you can't figure it out, you're too emotionally attached. I want you to be able to reach out to me. We can have a conversation. We can play scenarios. I can just listen to what you have to say and I'll, I'll maybe I'll ask questions and we can come to a conclusion with that. I would like to offer my great advice to all of you when you need it. So stay tuned because there will be some stuff in the description box, uh, not today, but in the future um, of where you can set up appointments uh, to call me. Um, we can do an, a half hour or an hour increments for discussing things. Um, and we can talk about whatever it is you want. Now, if there is something that requires a licensed doctor or a lawyer or the proper authorities, I I'm not going to be able to help you with that. And I'm going to be able to tell you, hey, I can't do this. You're going to have to, you're going to have to go get help here, here, here. Um, and I can help you find resources if you want. Um, I'm great at finding resources. Uh, my two degrees, one degree is in paralegal and, and the bachelor's in criminal justice. So I can pretty much find out whatever you want. Um, I'm kind of an expert at research. Uh, so I would, <clears throat> I'll be having something in the disclaimer. So then you can set up times and we can chat um, if you have things that you want to discuss and you're not sure because you feel too emotionally attached, um, I can give you some ideas. Um, we can come up with a game plan to try to help you through it. Um, <clears throat> I have been up and down financially in my lifetime several times. Um, I personally don't value money though. I value time. I can always make more money. I can't get my time back. I can't make more time. So I value time over money. With this being said, there are people out here that don't have the funds to pay for somebody that needs to help them. So 
I'm going to do this on a donation basis. So if you need 30 minutes or an hour of my time, and we're going to figure some things out. And if we have to do it on a regular basis until you you feel confident, then that's what we'll do. Um, I'm not going to set an amount. Um, I would um, basically just ask that if you got something out of it and you think it was valuable and you can afford it, to go ahead and throw some money that way, my way. But if it's not something you can afford... Don't feel bad. I'm supposed to be here and be of service to my fellow human beings. And that's exactly what I want to do with this. I want to be of service and be able to use what I'm good at to help better the world and better your world. So with all of these epiphanies, I have freed myself from my pre conditioning um i don't i i i i i don't i don't have anything holding me back anymore <clears throat> before there was before there was lots of things that would pop up hold on My shower is making a funny noise, but it shouldn't be on. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, uh, the shower shouldn't have, I don't know why it was dripping. Uh, things happen. To old RV. Anyways, um, I realized that all of this preconditioning that I had was <clears throat> was holding me back, and and I couldn't see it. I, I, there were point bits and points during my life that I I could kind of see it, but I think I lived in denial. Um, and like I said. 2020, the, the, that January, that February kind of changed everything. I remember it was snowing. I was in Wisconsin. I was at my mother's. And I remember outside having a cigarette. And I just started bawling. And I looked up to the sky. And I said, God, please give me strength. Give me strength. Because right now, I don't think I have any. And I kept saying that and kept saying that for weeks on end. And slowly but surely I was given strength. And as everything kept progressing, like mom getting sick and passing my uncle, I had two uncles that got sick, one that had to, had to have, um, well, one of his main arteries is now a tube. Um, because of a huge infection that he had. Um, he's doing good though. And then my other uncle had stage four prostate cancer, which he's doing good too. Um, and my aunt Jackie had passed. Um, there was a lot, there was a, there was a lot that had gone on, um, since then. And as I went through this stuff, all I kept thinking is, I can't handle anymore. Don't throw something else out there. I can't do this. And the truth was, I couldn't. I didn't think that I had it in me. But I did. And these past few years have been... Have been me learning how to trust his will and how to hand it over. And since I've done it and I've learned to do it, life is so much better. I cannot tell you all of those epiphanies that I had last night about these 
preconditioned ideas or or these things that that I held on to as as actual beliefs inside of me and some of them I didn't realize that I even I believed that but I don't need a significant other to be a successful independent person I'm doing it all on my own now um so let's work through some of your preconceived um, beliefs and, and, and get you on the right path to your true authentic self. Um, I'm going to be, like I was saying a little while ago, I'm going to be setting it up so we can do phone calls. Um, and then when we have enough people, um, we can do live Q and A things, um, <clears throat> and, and stuff like that. Uh, I also want you to stay aware because I'm going to start doing some shorts. Um, <laughs> I have some pet peeves when I'm out driving, so I will be sharing with you some of Danny's PSAs. <laughs> it just came to me last night when I was out doing delivery, and a huge pet peeve of mine is people not using their turn signal. So, or the merging thing. But... We'll get into those in some of the shorts. Those will be, those will be, well, as they say, shorts. And they'll be more kind of to the point. Uh, some of them may be funny. Some of them may not. They're not all going to be PSAs, though. Um, so watch out for that. Um, but again, I want you to know you are not alone. I love you. I care about you. And you don't have to feel alone. So keep an eye on in the description. Um, I will set up the links and stuff so we can get some, um, appointments ready and stuff and we can start talking and, and helping you get to your true authentic self and making your life so much better because that is my goal with this is to help make as many people as I can's life better. I can't do it personally, but I can be there to to be a sounding board because I'm not emotionally attached to your guys' situations. So, I'm so excited about <laughs> my true authentic self. Today I was just on cloud nine the whole day. I can't tell you how many times I looked up to the sky and said thank you. Um, it's almost like overnight things have changed. Um, and I kept believing that that would happen. That's the weirdest part. I kept believing that everything would change like overnight but I had to get through some things and I had to get to the bottom of stuff in order to get to my true authentic self and then the sky's the limit and all I thought was yep I'm gonna get there and I got there I got there last night so we're on a great journey I'm gonna still keep doing videos for you guys um and as we grow our soul tribe um we're going to start being loving, kind, and supportive to one another. Something that we really lack in, in, in the world today and, and in society in general right now. I mean, I, I think a lot of that has gone down the tubes, especially since, especially since we've had um, uh, the lockdowns from the pandemic. Uh, I think that really kind of ostracized a lot of people and we came back into the world not not very loving and kind so that's my goal is to build us a soul tribe that we can help each other become successful and find our true calling and enjoy life so with all of that said I would like to wish you a good night. I hope everything's going great in your life. Um, if not, feel free to message. Put it in the chats that you need to talk to somebody. I'll, I'll, I'll gladly contact you and we can set up some time to do it. And again, if you don't have the money, I'm not going to turn you away. And yes, I know that I run the risk of people that who the people that may just use 
the situation, but I assure you <laughs> that everything that I've learned to come to my true authentic self, um, I'm going to peg you off pretty quickly and then you're going to be cut off. I'm going to be here as many times as I need to for people who need it. Um, and I'm not going to let money get in the way of that. Um, and if, you know, I help people out who do have some money and you feel that I've, I've done you some good, then you can throw it at me. It's donations only. There's no set amount. Um, but let's build a beautiful soul tribe, guys. Let's, let's, let's make the world that we all live in a little bit better. Night, guys.